Well, hello and welcome. Today we're going to be trying to take some chicken quarters that I purchased and we're going to put them in storage. We're going to can these chicken quarters. So I'm just here to kind of teach you how to do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get me a, a knife and I actually want some cutting scissors. makes my job a little bit easier. And we'll get these uh, chicken quarters here and I'll show you how we are going to prepare them uh, to can them. I, I don't want the bones in my canning and I kind of just want to separate the meat. So we'll actually kind of make it into a filet. So let me get my knives and scissors and we'll get started and I'll show you how we'll do this. Okay. I've got my knife and scissors here, so what I'll do, I'll just get me one of these chicken quarters. And the skin on it, you can just get it and just kind of take it. What we want to do is just kind of just tear the skin off of it. Like so. And when you get back here to the back side, if you can't get it, what you want to do is just kind of just trim it off there. There we go. We'll get all this off here in just a minute. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it over in a pot. Uh, we're actually gonna save it to uh, using chicken broth. The next thing we wanna do is this uh, spine and rib bones, we just wanna kinda of just get up under it. Let's get our knife and we'll just lightly start cutting it. And there's a hip joint right there. And what we're gonna do is just kinda of bring it back, snap it just like that. And then we can just go right between the joint and just make a nice little cut. Like so. Then we can just come back here and just lay that off. Uh, this is just skin meat. It's not really good. We're going to put this in the pot and save it for, for chicken broth. So now what we want to do is we want to follow this little thigh leg bone. We're going to cut on both sides of it. So we'll just take our knife and just kind of just start cutting down through there like so to where we can get up under it. Once you get up under it, you can just take your finger and just kind of pull it back like that. And then we're going to do the same thing with our chicken leg bone. We're just going to kind of get in there and follow it through. You should be able to just run your finger up under that bone like so. And then once you got that, just take your knife and just run it up under there. And then you just cut it away like that. Now we can just kind of just trim the meat back around the, the bone. Now this is where the, let me get this little bit of meat right here off. Now to me, this is where the scissors come in handy. I want to get these bones together and kind of separate the meat a little bit from the bone and then I'll get my scissors. And what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just cut that off just like that. I got a little bit of bone in on that one, so I'll uh, bring my scissors back and cut that part out. All right, and after doing that, we've got a nice little play. We can kind of kind of cut this skin off some more. Get some of this fat off of it. All right, let me uh, prepare the rest of these. And I just happen to think I want to show you an alternative way to clean your chicken if time is an issue and and you don't mind 
scrapping just a little bit of extra meat is uh is by just using scissors so it makes it a little bit quicker but you may lose just a little bit more not a whole lot more but um let's get you a nice sharp pair of scissors you need to get some from harbor freight um they work pretty good but just get your rib cage separate your hip joint from it one of your scissors just kind of travel behind it and cut that out this where you'll lose lose the most meat as you see I didn't lose I didn't use a whole lot and even if you want to you can I mean that's not really any worth the trouble but um come right down your bone trim it just like that should be enough that you can get your fingers under it and pull it out do the same right here with your chicken leg just run your scissors in there you'll be able to feel the bone you can just run your scissors down through there get down to it you run your finger up under the bone Put your scissors under there. Cut that away. Kinda snip right there a little bit. Get your bones, gather them up. And just kinda just trim around them. So that's just a little bit faster. Um, and cut your fat off with them. So, I mean, that in comparison to our first one that we did, or maybe that was the second one. I mean, there's a little bit of loss but it's okay. It kind of gets impatient if you start doing 20 pounds of chicken quarters. So um, that's just an alternative way that you can do this. All right, friends. So the question comes about of why in the world would I use these leg quarters over that nice white breast meat like those other channels have got? Well, uh, for two reasons. One uh, is the taste. I love the taste of dark meat. I prefer it better than that old dry white meat anytime. So this goes good in making any kind of casseroles or anything, but the number one reason that I use it is actually twofold. One is for cost and long time storage. Uh, this chicken, for one year, it'll keep its full flavor when it's canned. Uh, you can keep it up to five years is what is recommended and, and still be safe. Um, I've heard people say as much as 10 to 15 years. Um, so I guess if it comes down to it and you needed it for some type of food storage uh, or a food shortage, then maybe this could be good. We'd have to wait. 10 or 15 years to find out but um, with our economy the way it is and uh, war and everything else it it's just good to have a long-term storage of some poultry and I purchased 20 pounds of poultry or the chicken quarters for $16 so I purchased that for cheaper than what I could buy a pack of chicken, sometimes chicken breast, sometimes. Uh, that's including tax. And we dressed out almost seven pounds of chicken, actually six pounds, 13 ounces. I'll, I'll show you right here. All right, now then, before we start cutting this up, let's come over here to our, uh, to our pot of our waste.
All right, so here's our waste. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I just put it out on a pot. I'm gonna fill that pot up with some warm water. And kind of move it around and take out all the air and get it just nice and full of water. All right, now we'll just take it and set it over here on the stove. So I'm just gonna set this over here on the stove and go ahead and turn it on. I don't want it on high. I'm just gonna turn it on medium. And that way I'll have time to, it won't come to rolling boil and boil all the water out of my pot. So once it gets boiling, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it cook for an hour. Uh, and I'll give it time to make a good broth. So let's get back over here and get cutting our chicken. Just in case she's wondering how much the chicken weighed dressed, that's six pounds, 13 ounces. All right, so here's our waste. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I just put it out on a pot. I'm gonna fill that pot up with some warm water. And kind of move it around and take out all the air and Get it just nice and full of water. All right, now we'll just take it and set it over here on the stove. All right, so I'm just gonna set this over here on the stove and go ahead and turn it on. I don't want it on high. I'm just gonna turn it on medium and that way I'll have time to it won't come to rolling boil and boil all the water out of my pot. So once it gets boiling, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it cook for an hour uh, and I'll give it time to make a good broth. So let's get back over here and get cutting our chicken. All right, so we'll just start taking our chicken and we're just gonna just start making some nice slices. If no one's ever taught you, whenever you're cutting, take your fingers and dig it in and use the back of your knuckles like that to lay your knife. And then you just slice and not cut yourself. So while cooking our chicken stock, our chicken broth, this is what we're looking for. I've turned the heat down to where you can see bubbles just barely breaking the surface. So it's actually still boiling, uh, but it's a slow boil. We don't want to do a fast boil and just let it cook like this for an hour. So we'll just put our lid over there and just let it cook. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get this chicken ready to can. While our broth is still cooking, so what I'm gonna do is let's take mace jars and we'll put a, a funnel on there and I'm gonna start adding my chicken to it. We wanna 
have about an inch of head space left. Kind of pack it down there. That should be good enough. We'll set that one aside. And Generally, you can get about one pound in each jar. That might be just a little bit too much. We'll put some in there. kind of shake them down just a little bit. Probably use just a little bit more. Just a little bit out of that one. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more to a couple of these. tap them down and use this right here and see if we can't get some of the air out. Measures one inch, so I'll be fine. Take that one, put it in that one. It's kind of knocks on the air, but see how that packed down. I know I've done done this one, but going all the way around it. Makes a little noise, but but we can get a little extra room that way. So basically, the top of your jar head here, or the bottom of where the thread's at, that's generally about one inch. So we we definitely want to have our chicken below that level.
just kind of move some stuff around as we need to. Should be just about a have an inch head space on every one of these now. Yeah, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a paper towel, fold it up real nice and neat, and I've got some some vinegar over here. I'm just gonna wet my paper towel in the vinegar and we'll just uh just kind of wipe our lids off. any fat or any contaminants off of our lid like you can see right here where right here where there was a piece of foul net we don't want that up on the as a matter of fact I'm just gonna kind of push that down just a little bit and then wipe around it so generally what I do is I pour up one cup of uh, vinegar I use a little bit to wipe my lids off and then I'll pour the rest of the vinegar into the pressure cooker. So now we're just going to take and just put our lids on our jars. Used to in the old days you, they'd say you'd have to wet or soak your things or sterilize them well that's the whole point of the canner is to sterilize everything and to seal it now so we don't do anymore so when we put the lids on we just want to turn it to where it stops turning don't put no superman strength on that thing or you won't ever get it off so we just turn it just to where it quits turning And that's plenty tight enough. All right. There's seven jars. I'm going to set these to the side and wait till our chicken broth's done. It's got about 15 20 more minutes left and we'll pour it up then we'll be ready to can uh by the way i want you to notice on this jar you hear that that sound after we get done canning we don't want to hear that sound no more so we'll check that later and make sure it's not doing that that's a way that we know it's sealed all right, our chicken stock or chicken broth is all done now. Let's take the lid off and well, that broth looks good. I wish you could smell it. It smells amazing. So what we'll do is we'll just cut the heat off of it and bring it over here to the sink. All right, so here we've got a bowl with a colander in it. I'm just going to just pour it right through the strainer. And now we'll sit there and just let that drain for a minute. This broth does smell amazing. So we're just gonna get our jars. Now, while in our chicken, we could allow an inch of headspace. We need about a about an inch and quarter 
head space with this. So I'm just going to take this, fill each one of these jars up. That'll be good. Just a little bit more in each one of these. Not a whole lot more of it. Get out of that one. A little bit too steep in that one, too. While I store that chicken for long-term storage, uh, we use chicken broth on a pretty regular basis, so we'll actually use this up pretty quick. I don't think I'm going to have enough for a whole nother jar. Well, I think that's going to be about it. So let me uh, get our jars over here. Get me a paper towel. Wet it down with some vinegar and clean off our lips. Or clean off the jar tops. Make sure we ain't got none of that greasy film on top of it. Put our put my lids on here. Say how it is, red and warm.
All right. Here's all of our stuff that we can. can. I'm going to take the vinegar I got left over. Bring it over here to my pressure cooker and we're just going to dump it in the water there. Inside this, inside this pressure cooker, you can't hardly see it, but there is a line. It's, it's over here that shows the fill line, so it's not very much. And then in the bottom of it, we've got a a rack that's going to keep our our jars from bouncing around as the water bubbles. So what we'll do now is I'll just bring the my jars over here, and we'll place them in the in the pot. All right, where you see what I'm doing? I'm just going to place all these around in a circle. These are a little bit harder, so I'm gonna do them with some with some tones. Try to keep my jars from moving around. And I'm gonna have to. I got another top that I can put on here. We'll put these other three jars up here. All right, now then, we'll just take our lid. And we'll put our lid on. Try to keep my jars from moving around. And I'm gonna have to. I got another top that I can put on here. We'll put these other three jars up here. Our jars in here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my heat on high and let it start heating up and bring it to a bowl. All right, we've got our canner at a rolling bowl. I've got it on high heat. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just put the lid on it. Show you how that works. So we have to. It only goes on there a certain way, and then you can turn and there's a. When the handles meet up, you know that it's right. As soon as I get it on, I'm going to turn the heat down to medium. I don't want it to boil too fast, go up the heat too fast. Now, I didn't tell you earlier, but the reason I put the vinegar inside the pot is to where my jars don't get the white spots on them. And vinegar is pretty inexpensive. So we're going to wait until the steam starts coming out of the little vent here. And we're gonna have this little valve right here. It's gonna pop up and seal it off. I'll try to show you as we go what I'm talking about. All right, your little valve, it's gonna start spitting and sputtering a little bit like this one. And that's expected, that's normal. That's actually what you wanna see. That lets you know that it's fixing to start start having steam come out of it. So we're getting close. Here in just a second, you're gonna start seeing bubbles start coming out of this. That means that's fixing to pop up. And we're gonna see if we can't catch the exact minute that pops up and that means that it is currently under pressure. And that's a, a valve that locks the pressure cooker. To, it's a safety device to keep you from opening it. So we'll see if we can't catch the exact moment that it pops up. All right, here comes the bubbles. All right, it's pop up right here. There we go. Now she's under pressure. We'll sit back and just watch for the
Now pressure is going to start coming out of the vent here. And we're not looking for intermediate pressure. We're looking for a constant. I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually steam rolling from it right now. But we're actually looking for a constant strain. Okay, I'm not sure that you can see it, but there is a steady stream of steam coming out of this now. Let me see if I aim it up, maybe see if you can see it, but I know you can definitely hear it. So what we want to do right now that it's like this, we want to leave it at this level and let it run just like this for 10 minutes. Let the pressure normalize inside the canner and then we'll put our weight on it after that. My weight is just a, it's just a single way that don't have the different measurements on it because we run off of the off the dial here so here in a minute we'll put the the weight on top of the little pressure valve and let it start building pressure been going for 10 minutes now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drop the heat all the way down to two and i'm gonna put the weight on top of it and we're gonna let this thing slowly come up the temp we're gonna watch this dial right here start moving up like I said we want to be at 11 for where I'm at if you're above a thousand feet in elevation you want to be at 15 well, as you can see our pressure slowly starting to come up it's at about two pounds right now but we're gonna watch it just keep creeping up okay it's finally up to almost five pounds uh, we've still got a ways to go I'm just slowly increasing the temperature it's always better to go too slow and your needle go up too slow than it is to go up too fast and and overshoot and then have to work on cranking it back down and you you're just playing a seesaw battle too much so just slowly turn your heat up let it slowly start increasing heat uh, your patience will be rewarded once it finally gets there then you can just leave it alone and walk away so we're just gonna keep letting the pressure build up and till we get it up to 11 and that's where for my location that's where we're trying to get it up to there it's just slowly climbing up there we're almost there. I'm just going to keep inching the heat up till I get it there. Right now I'm on four on my control. I don't know. You'll have to play with your own see what it winds up being at your, where you're at. Okay, here we are. Magic 11 pounds. That's where I need to be to have safe cannon in my area. Okay, so we're just gonna let this go. I'm gonna set the timer on this for 75 minutes. For an hour and 15 minutes. Just let it go. Um, at this pressure, for our 15 minutes, that's what it takes to kill off the salmonella and the coli. It kills the spores, um, and that's what makes it last for so long in these jars. So for right now, we're just going to walk away, let it do nothing. Uh, going to check every now and then just to make sure that it doesn't drop below 11 pounds. If it does, you'll bring it back up to temp, and then start your timer over. But I think we're going to be okay. Um, I might actually have to back the temperature down just a hair. We're just a little over 11 pounds. If it goes over 11 pounds, it's okay. We just don't want it to go below. But on the other hand, we don't want it to go way over and get down here in the danger zone, neither. So when it's it, once our timer's done, we'll come back and and finish up.
Okay, our time's up. We'll cut the heat off. So we've done let it run for 75 minutes. And this is the hardest part that people has to do. Leave it alone. Just walk away and leave it alone. We need this pressure to go all the way down to zero and this little thing right here to drop before we're ever ready to open it. So just walk away, leave this thing alone, let all the pressure decrease in it, and we'll come back later after it's cooled down and then we can open it up. But until then, once again, I can't stress enough, just walk away. Don't sit there and stare at it. Don't look at it. The more you look at it, the longer it takes. Just walk away. So just like what I'm fixing to do. Prime example of what I'm talking about. You see here how the pressure is at zero, but yet this is still up. So we want to keep waiting. Let that completely drop down. You can hear it's still boiling in there. So it's still it's still under a slight amount of pressure, but but it has dropped down. Let this cool down a little bit more and that will we'll go ahead and let that fall. Then what's it does, we'll take the weight off of it and let it vent for about ten more minutes before we open it up. Alright, it just failed. And it was probably just about 30 seconds after I had said something about it having not failing yet. It only been about 30 seconds after I said that it hadn't failed yet. Right, so now what we want to do is we're going to remove that weight and we're just going to just let some more steam stuff come up out of it and let it cool off for about 10 more minutes. All right, that's good enough. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open that up. And when we lift it up, we're going to pull it back away from us. And that way we, the steam goes out that way. Here, our lid's cracking. <laughs> Playing some music for us. You can still, if you'll watch, you'll see it still bubble. take these top ones off something where I can remove this rack. Now we'll move it over here where you can see more of what I'm doing. I'm just going to move the canner over here in the sink. We're just going to set them out here where they can cool. Here's our first can of chicken. Or actually a jar of chicken.
Let me pull this up a little bit closer to you and you can see that see how it's still boiling? It's laying there in its own broth. Well, that's it for right now. Now we're just going to let this set out for 12 to 24 hours and just let it cool off. You still see how hot it is right now. It's still boiling over here. I uh, say so it'll take a little bit to cool down. But once it gets down to room temperature, then it'll be ready for us to check and store away. So I'll bring you back once it all cools down and we'll look at it and see what we've got. I just kind of wanted to bring you in close and let you see how this is still boiling. So it's still cooking even if after we've done canning it. So we'll just let it cool down now. All right, it's the next day. Let's see what we got. We got some not so pretty dark meat chicken. It's just cause it doesn't look pretty in a can, but I bring it up here where you can see it. But it's all covering the brow. Let's look at our chicken stock, our chicken brow. That looks pretty good. So all we're gonna do now is where I can save my lids is I'm just gonna take the lids off of them. Uh, it's going to take a lot of force to be able to take that off. But you remember at the first of the video, you could hear the clicking on the top. Well, see, now it doesn't do that when I press it, and that's because it it's sealed now. So all I'm going to do is just take all the lids off all my cans to where I can save them for later. Well, as we do this, we'll find out if they're all... Make sure they're all sealed, which I know they will be because none of them clicks whenever I try to open it. And that's all there is to it. As always, I love you. God loves you. And I hope you have a great day.